यू वॉचिंग न्यूज मेर इजी आई एम ऑनंद चक्रवर्ती आर पॉलिसी होल्डर्स ऑफ एल आई सी द मिलियन ऑफ पॉलिसी होल्डर्स ऑफ एल आई सी आर दे बींग रोक्ट बाय द आई पी ओ इज दिस आई पी ओ एक्चुअली गोइंग टू एंड अप क्रिएटिंग वेल्थ फॉर अ फ्यू द लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ पीपल हु ऑपरेट इन द स्टॉक मार्केट इज दैट वॉट इट इज गोइंग टू बी एंड द मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस ऑफ एवरेज इंडियंस हु होल्ड पॉलिसीज इन एल आई सी आर दे गोइंग टू बी Uh, is it going to tilt against them are they being roped out of what rightfully belongs to them and i'm going to answer that question um first of all let us understand that lic was created in 1956 when uh, a number of these companies which were going bankrupt insurance companies which were doing badly were nationalized and the government gave about 5 crore rupees to uh, as capital and then over a period of time millions and millions of indians have bought these policies they pay premiums and with that lic has actually gone to nearly 40 lakh crore of um, uh, it now has a uh, you know its assets under management are nearly 40 lakh crore that's the massive amount it currently has and all of this all of this is policy holder premium and money which has come in and the uh, Uh, the profit that LIC has made from it. All right. Till recently, ninety-five percent of the uh, surplus that LIC got, which is the additional money every year that it made over and above its liabilities, what it had uh, to pay out or what it uh, others owed it, right? Um, it owed to others had to be given to policyholders. Ninety-five percent in twenty eleven, it was this uh, rule was tweaked a bit. and lsc was told that at least 90% of its surplus annual surplus has to be given back as dividend to policy holders and the remaining it can either hold and give to the shareholder and who's the shareholder shareholder is the government of india remember with just 5 crore rupees that it gave between uh, 2000 uh, between 1956 to 2011 now what has happened is that lsc has further tweaked this what it has done is that it is saying that over a period of next 2 to 3 years by 2025 policy holders participating policy holders or those who are uh, entitled to dividends they will get only 90% of the share uh, surpluses right so 5% is being taken out of it and that is one of the ways in which shareholders are getting rewarded shareholders will now get 10% by 2025 and that is going to make uh, lic as ipo more valuable to shareholders right they have 10% of the surplus but that is not all there's another thing that is happening in the insurance business there are two kinds of policy holders one is called the participating policy holders by participating policy holders what happens is that they get dividends they are entitled to dividends and uh, the final amount that they get because the dividend they get dividends is less than what non participating um you know, policy holders get non participating policy holders are people who buy policies with a fixed return they get no variable dividends they do not get dividends annually that are declared based on profits and surpluses uh what they get is at the end of a term or at the death of the policy holder the family gets a fixed amount so they are non participating policy holders till now the entire surplus that lic had part of the lic act 95% of it uh, annual uh, surplus had to be given as dividend and that as i said was changed to 90% later and uh, this uh, would then uh, a certain amount would then go to shareholders 5% would go to shareholders which is was the government of india in this case and now after the ipo private entities very few remember very few private entities about what 3% of indians probably hold uh, shares and have active dp accounts and they are the only people who would be actually uh, making money out of this ipo uh, they are going to get the remaining 5% but that is not all and this is an interesting thing one of the the way in which insurance companies are valued as to what is going to be their market value when the share is listed is determined something nowadays by something called embedded value which is not only all the past uh, assets that it has but also estimate is to made as to what its future profits are going to be future profits that will accrue to shareholders 
not to policy holders pay out to dividend pay out to policy holders will obviously not uh, go to shareholders that so anything that will go to shareholders will of in the future is obviously going to affect the valuation today of that company right so in lic what has been done is that this change has been made as i said one part is that from uh, 95% by 2025 um, uh, participating policyholders will only get 90% of the surplus as dividend but here's another twist that has taken place in september this year lic has split its total funds into two parts one is the participating policyholders uh, share and the other is the funds that are that have been uh, that have been collected from uh, policy holders who are non-participating as i said non-participating are those who are going to get fixed return now the non-participating part whichever sub whatever surplus or profit earnings that come additional earnings that come from that part of the fund participating policy holders remember they're the most maximum number of policy holders they'll get nothing from it 100% of that will go to shareholders now. All right? And 10% of what policy, what participating policyholders are creating, the surplus from that will still go to shareholders. And what is the division that has taken place? Uh, there is no reason right now because it's not as if those who buy uh, non-participating policies, they are going to get shares. No, right? So out of the 36 lakh odd crore, which was uh, the total fund that LIC had in September uh, 2021, approximately 24 and a half lakh crore is uh, funds that have been collected from participatory uh, policyholders. And about 11 and a half lakh crore has been collected from non-participating policyholders. Now, the interesting thing is till now, 95% of the surplus that came out of the total consolidated fund was due to participating was something that went as dividends to participating policyholders because that's the basis on which people took this participating policies right because they assume that they'll get a certain high amount of dividend which historically lic has given so that is being reduced plus the split into uh, they split into 68% of the total fund uh, accruing to participating policyholders and 32% to non-participatory. So if the total fund is 100 rupees, only 68 rupees, only the surpluses from 68 rupees will now go to the policyholders. Okay? Only the surplus. And that to only 90% of that will go to policyholders shareholders will get 100% of the surpluses from the 32%, which is the money which is coming from non-participating uh, policyholders. Shareholders, shareholders who have not put in any money except buying shares, are going to get um, all of the surpluses from that 32%, nearly one third of the total funds, and they will get 10% from the remaining as well. So the surpluses generated, shareholders will end up with at least one third of the surpluses. Whereas till now 95% of the uh, surpluses were coming to policyholders, participating policyholders, which are the majority of policyholders. Now they will get only two thirds. So literally one third of the dividends that they were going to get is being taken out and uh, given away to shareholders and that is what is going to make shares um, the shares of LIC attractive. So who is losing? Policyholders. Now, one of the things that the government has said, okay, 10% of the total uh, shares will be reserved for policyholders and policyholders will buy. That, uh, that is a joke because there are millions and millions of policyholders, many of whom are uneducated, who do not have PAN. And by the way, you have to update your PAN to be able to participate in the IPO. Most of them don't have DP accounts. Many of them uh, cannot have never heard of share markets. They cannot invest in shares, but they had put in pre bought premiums. Uh, they pay premiums and have life insurance. So it's a joke. Only 10%. Even here, only those who are the affluent among policyholders, they are going to benefit from this 10% reserved category for policyholders. And it's not really a major benefit. This is one part. The second part is 
there's some on, on news click itself you can go and look up articles by b shridhar uh, who has written about how lic is a uh, ipo is probably being <coughs> under undervalued and what does undervalued means it means that lic has massive amounts of real estate across the country which is not being valued properly which is probably not going to be part of the total valuation <coughs> of the company so shareholders are effectively going to get a company for much a much cheaper shares than the value real value of the company so in a sense it's a bit of a fire sale because the government is desperate to raise money from the uh, LIC IPO because it is running short of the money that it was supposed to raise in this fiscal so it wants this to go through so that it could raise mon money and show that it has raised money from the IPO so shareholders were inevitably 90% of them are going to be the richest indians they are going to gain by policy holders the aam aadmi aam aurat who holds policies they are going to lose from this ipo that's the show today keep watching news click do read uh, articles on lic's ipo and why that is bad for policy holders and probably bad for the economy as a whole the country as a whole uh, that's a separate issue altogether do read them share them share this video like this video and do subscribe to news click